Good morning, everybody. You can hear the choir singing in the background as the deer pants for the water. That means we're in All Saints Church on this, the 18th Sunday after Trinity. In a few minutes, we're going to be starting our Holy Communion, our Eucharistic service, and I invite you to join us. The service will start at around eight, uh, at 10 o'clock UK time, and until then, the choir will be singing. So, please, if you're going to join us, make yourselves comfortable. Our worship will begin in a few minutes. Thank you. 
And so now, good morning to all of us in All Saints and those of you who are worshipping with us at home. And welcome to, uh, we've got swallows returning every week and it's autumn, but swallows returning to the All Saints nest. Welcome to those of you who are back with us for the first time since we resumed our worship. Uh, I was reflecting as I was waiting for the choir to, to complete their beautiful singing. It used to be that we used to follow the, the cross in in a procession at the beginning. Now we follow the laptop. It used to be that we were thinking of anointing with holy oil and now we wash with antiseptic rub. doesn't matter. The most important, the only important thing is that we are able to worship God. And so let us do that now on this 18th Sunday after Trinity. And I greet you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's say together our bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us remember our imperfections in the sight of Almighty God and let us give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let us confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we can say together, Gloria in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let us pray our collect for this 18th Sunday after Trinity. God, our Judge and Saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the church in Philippi, the opening verses of the fourth chapter. Paul writes, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. 
Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by power and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, I invite you, if you're able and if you wish, to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing clothes, not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand to foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. He was actually wearing clothes, just not the right clothes. I think I must have been thinking about the king is in the old, altogether the emperor's new suit. Forgive that Freudian slip. But it links it very well to the text because it is the question of the king. Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? 
very topical Holy Gospel reading because on Friday, praise the Lord and thank God, we had a wedding here in All Saints, the much delayed marriage of, of Neil and Agatha. And 15 guests, we met all the COVID restrictions, all, all masked, beautifully made masks, white for the ladies, dark blue for the gentlemen. Uh, everybody was beautifully dressed. There was, there was one guy wearing a dress, but he was the priest and you can expect anything from those guys. But it doesn't happen always that all guests are appropriately dressed. I told the story against myself in the newsletter yesterday, repeat it briefly in the context of our, our homily this morning. The time when I was invited to the British Embassy Christmas party at the ambassador's residence, normally a formal occasion. And I and another guy were so stupid as to believe the story of our friends from the football team, the embassy football team, that the ambassador declared it would be an informal occasion. T-shirts were dirty girl. And the two of us went in T-shirts and arrived, and of course everybody else was in formal dress. We most certainly were not in wedding robes that evening. Thankfully, we weren't thrown into the outer darkness. But we can use this to move into what Jesus was portraying in the parable. The clothing that Jesus was referring to was not our physical attire. I remember the ambassador was very gracious. He said, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Most important is that you are here. Now that works if we're supposed to be here and if something is right. And if it's not our physical clothes, then it's something else. A second true story is an example of what Jesus was uh, explaining. From my time in Armenia, where we were privileged to be invited to a lot of diplomatic functions. And everybody was beautifully dressed. So the story is not about somebody appearing in an appropriate dress. The food was excellent also. But what was continually embarrassing was that those guests in their fine clothes, when it came to the official speeches, which I have to admit were not always so interesting, but group after group would start private conversations. And quite often it reached the stage where it was almost impossible to hear the words of the person who was speaking and making toast to the country and to their home country. In this case, the outer robes of the guests were spectacular, but it was their inner clothing that left a lot to desire in terms of their behavior. And this is what Jesus was referring to. As with last week's parable, in the original translation, the Greek refers not so much to a said story, a parable, as to an image. As I mentioned last week, Jesus again is drawing a picture, presenting a painting for people if they have the intuition to learn from. So what can we learn from a fictitious wedding banquet in the Holy Land and real occurrences in Armenia. Well, the first thing that Jesus made abundantly clear is it's not sufficient simply to accept an invitation and turn up. Yeah, that's what the invitees did repeatedly in Armenia. They were there and they had beautiful clothes to wear, but they did not have any real intention and purpose for going. Similarly, the religious leaders at the time of Jesus, they believed they knew everything already. And so they didn't have anything left to learn. And so they also, they simply turned up, but they weren't listening. They weren't changing their attitudes. It seems that nothing changes. This is what happened at the time of Jesus, and this is what happens still in the 21st century. How often do we turn up at a function wearing beautiful clothes 
can hardly take any attention to what is actually going on. In the image that Jesus portrayed and in the reality of the chief priests and Pharisees, the problem was a misunderstanding about what is really important and how much we as individuals already know. And in this respect, today's epistle, the part of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, is really relevant. It sets out perfectly what is important to God. And here we get to it. It's not so much what's important to us that matters. It surely should be what is important to God. So at the, this stage of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, there'd been some sort of disagreement between members of the church family and their names really difficult to pronounce. And Paul is writing to them, urging them to put their differences aside because almost inevitably, if two people had disagreed, that would spill over. There would be some who believed one, there would be some who believed the other, and it would lead to unhappiness and dissension. Paul urged the people of the Church of Philippi to forget their differences and instead concentrate on what God wishes them to be. Not what they would wish to be, how God would wish them to be. In other words, stop thinking about our external clothes and focus instead on inside of us, our thoughts, our beliefs our actions. Now in this respect Paul begins with words of encouragement. He reminds us that God is near to us all and so it's vital to let our gentleness, a gentleness which comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, be known to everyone. Now if we can portray the Spirit of God through us then songs like Bob Marley's Don't Worry, Be Happy or Eric Idle's Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, they are perfectly written for us. And Paul writes, don't worry about anything. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry about anything. What do you think? It's you know, all right for him. Of course it's all right for him. We carry every one of us our loads on our backs. And sometimes they can be heavy. But what Paul reminds us is that the only way to make those loads lighter is to share them. And he tells us that the Lord is near and the peace of God will help us to keep going, guarding our hearts and our minds. So, Paul emphasizes that the God of peace is always with us. The challenge we have is to be aware of it, to feel it, to recognize it, and to live with it. And he gives a, a recipe. Yeah, it's almost getting round to time for Christmas cakes and Christmas puddings. And the recipe is really important. And so it is with living in a proper way, with proper clothes, and being welcome at the wedding banquet. The recipe that Paul gave was to be true to our word, to be honourable, to be just and pure in our lifestyles, to do things which are pleasing, not for us, not for those around us, pleasing in the eyes of God. Commendable. Worthy of praise by our colleagues. This is the pattern. And these are the materials of the wedding robe that will ensure that we are not asked that dreadful question. What are you doing here? If you've ever been asked that question in that tone of voice, you'll know what a horrible feeling it is to be questioned what right do you have to be here? And so it is really important 
to take care about our spiritual clothing, to make sure that how we are is the type of person that God is looking for when he drops into the heavenly wedding banquet. Why does it matter? Well, if we live as Paul recommends, then he assures us that we will be made welcome and that welcome will be eternal. And now I invite you again, if you're able and if you wish, to stand as we profess our faith in the words of the King. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we worship you this morning, we pray that our clothes may be beautiful and appropriate in your eyes. Help us, please, to stop thinking about what is important to us and what might seem pleasing to those around us. Help us to focus on how we can shine your light, how we can be pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we give you thanks that we are able to worship you now. Some of us here in All Saints, others in their homes around the world. We thank you that we are able to worship you and we thank you that we wish to worship you. We give you thanks that we have this beautiful house where we can come to be with you. And we thank you that we have homes where also we can be comfortable and where we can take time to give thanks to you for your goodness. Everything that we have, this church, our homes, our clothes, our being, all are gifts from you, for which we say thank you, God. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And now we share with you the cares of our hearts and of our world. Lord, help us to live with coronavirus and to do all that we are able to minimise its impact on us and on those around us. We pray for those who are affected by coronavirus immediately and by its long-term effects. From our church family, we continue to pray especially for Luke Jan as he fights coronavirus. And we pray for all others who are affected by it. And we pray for the, the families of those who mourn the loss of dear ones to this dreadful disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we share with you 
thoughts that are close to our hearts. We thank you for all the good things in our lives and we share with you our anxieties, our fears and worries. And we commend to you those who we know and love who especially at this time need to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit to sustain them and to encourage them. In the silence of these prayers, we share those people with you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally in these prayers, we remember those who we have known and loved who are no longer with us. We thank you that we had the privilege to share their lives and to feel their love and to see how they wore beautiful clothes in your eyes. We pray that their rest with you may be eternal and we pray that we may show that we have learned from them by the way that we live our lives. And so we draw together all of our prayers, spoken and the prayers of our hearts, as we pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, my own peace I give you, and it's a peace that the world cannot give. And he gave it as a gift to us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let's share by waving a sign of the peace. Peace be with you all, and those of you at home, peace be with you, and peace from the people of the church. And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of your everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. 
the atmosphere. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now we will take the Eucharist here in All Saints. We'll take it in one kind, and if you remain seated, I will come round to you all individually, and you just simply place your hands, and I will drop the wafer into your hands without any physical contact. Those of you who are at home, I invite you to say the prayer of the act of spiritual communion that you can see on your screens right now. For those of you in the congregation, I remind you, this is the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. 
for here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace, and here a pledge of future glory is given when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. And now I invite those of you at home to say the prayer which you can see as we here pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our chosen bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they may be, today and always. So to all of you, those of you in there, inside that laptop, that magical laptop which sends messages all over the world, so to those of you at home and those of you here in All Saints, thank you for worshipping with us this morning. It's wonderful to see everybody here and also to see the sun. We had that wonderful wedding on Friday and true to form, of course, after a beautiful Friday morning, it poured down by 2.30 when Agnes... Agatha and uh, Neil came, but they didn't let it stop the joy of their wedding. And they've left these beautiful flowers, the azaleas in pots, uh, they've left them as a gift to the church, and they are uh, brightening and showing beauty uh, in church. So we wish Neil and Agatha every good fortune and happiness in their life together. Looking forward, next Sunday we will meet as usual the service will be uh, you know, even shorter. You know, we're, we're, we're no longer allowed to, uh, to go to our usual hour, hour and a little bit. But the service will be even a little bit shorter because immediately after the service, we will have our annual parochial church meeting, which will also be a very short affair. So those of you who are from the parish and uh, are watching at home, the service will be on Facebook as usual. And then as soon as the service finishes, the Facebook link will stop and if all works well, a Zoom connection will start within five minutes. I've just had a thumbs up, so it looks as though the, uh, the technology is on our side. So there'll be a break of two, three minutes and then a Zoom connection will open up. It will be the link which you can see here, the same link as for our coffee meetings, our virtual men's nights and the virtual ladies evenings so service and then the annual parochial church meeting you are about or have you already received reports mary in the next day or two you'll receive all of the reports because we need to keep things very uh, short and brief all of the reports will be sent to you electronically or if you're not using the internet they'll be hand delivered hard copies to you so that you can look at them and we will only take questions and comments. I will make a very brief Vickers report and we will elect the, the key officers. And of course, if you've got questions, we will receive them. That's next Sunday. And then just an, a note looking a little bit further ahead to start to fix in your diaries. This year, our Patronal Festival, All Saints Day, is on a Sunday. Sunday the 1st of uh, November. It's about three weeks' time. Our worship will be of this style, we can't do anything different, but we will have a, uh, the, the privilege of a visit from our new Archdeacon, Archdeacon Catherine Pickford. She will be here to preside and preach at our Patronal Festival. That, that's three weeks' time, just to, so you can start to fix it in your diaries. Um, I'm thinking now and working out how we can commemorate all souls and remembrance it will be very different from the way that we have done it previously. 
I will share information when I know what is possible, what is within government guidelines, and what is within Church of England guidelines. Uh, the, you have the, the link showing there will be virtual coffee in about 20 minutes after the end of the service, when we have time to get to our homes. If you'd like to join for a coffee over the internet, you'll be very welcome. I mentioned in the newsletter, so I just repeat the thanks for the gifts of um, food, which went to the uh, Power Food Bank. We took about 40-something kilos uh, last Wednesday, or Linda did. There's at least another 10 or 12 in the parish office waiting to go this week. So I think it's going to be around 60 kilograms of food and toiletries going to the, the food bank. Much needed, as well as our, our cash giving. Okay, so let's... But not... Oh, sorry, for people who are here the first time, we have to go out through the, the coffee kitchen, down the passage, and out through the office door. And it's the old queuing system, so north aisle first, please, then the north side of the central aisle, then the south side of the central aisle, and then the north side of the south aisle, and then the, the window side of the south aisle. If you could all go out that way. And I will be standing outside to greet you uh, if you wish to have a brief chat. So wherever you're going to be these coming days, whatever you're going to be doing, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.